Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And ask yourself what kind of breathing would feel good now. If you're not sure, just go down through the body, starting at the back of the neck, down the shoulders and the arms, relaxing muscles as you go. Then start at the back of the neck again, again go down the spine, down through the pelvis, down through your legs. Sit straight, but relax everything you can, and it still allows you to sit up straight. And when you do that, you usually find that the breath will find a good rhythm. Think of the breath bathing the body. Every cell in your body is bathed with breath energy. This is healing. It's nourishing. If you've been through a rough day, this is a good way to clean out all the, the damage, heal all the damage that's been done. This is a way of showing goodwill for yourself. It gives you a source of well-being, a source of ease inside that doesn't need to depend on conditions outside. It doesn't need to depend on other people. It doesn't need to depend on whether the economy is going good or bad, whether the world is peaceful or not peaceful. You've got this sense of well-being that you can tap into inside. And at the very least, it gives you some respite, gives you some time off. Better than that, though, it becomes a foundation inside you, because you don't have to do this only while you're sitting here with your eyes closed. As you go through the day, you can check in on how your breathing is feeling. And if you find any patterns of tension or blockages in the body, think of them dissolving away. And when you have a sense of well-being inside, The body is less of a burden on the mind. It actually becomes a source of pleasure, a source of harmless pleasure. Because this is a pleasure that doesn't involve harming anybody else, and at the same time it keeps your mind clear. There are a lot of pleasures you can gain, sights through sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations that actually cloud your mind. This one doesn't. This one clears the mind. And it's showing goodwill to yourself in this way. You're also showing goodwill to others. You don't need to lean on them so much for, for your happiness. The mind has a tendency to feed. The Buddha talks about the different kinds of food for the mind. Part of it is just sensory impressions, your awareness of the senses. The mind feeds off of these things. But that kind of food can be like potato chips. You eat and eat and eat, and you never really get full, but then you do get full, but you don't feel right. And there's the food of, as he said, our intentions. And these can be either skillful or unskillful. And what we're doing as we meditate is to give ourselves some skillful intentions to feed off of. So we don't have to feed off of people outside things outside, situations outside. And that right there is an act of kindness to others. Because all too often in our relationships with other people, we're hoping that they will make us happy. And that's too much of a demand to put on any relationship. If you can make yourself happy inside, then you don't need to lean on other people so much. You're more independent, and the other person is also a little bit more independent, too. At the same time, as you become more reliable inside, given the fact that you've got this source of energy, source of well-being inside, you become re more reliable to others. It's like those streams and wells that have water that depends not on the rain, but apparently comes up from under the metal of the earth. Whether there's rain outside or no rain outside, like the stream here in front of the monastery. Even through the worst drought, we've always had water. There are places throughout the earth where there are wells, 
even in the middle of the desert, to give water all the time. And as you can imagine, those become a source of well-being for a lot of people. Well, this is what you developed inside as you developed these skills in meditation. The water that runs all the time, even in drought. If you have the sense of well-being that you can depend on, then other people can depend on you as well. You become more reliable. They don't become the victims of your moods so much. So this is a good thing to do all around. This is what the Buddha was looking for, as he said, when he was looking at the world. Before he went off into the forest, everything seemed to be laid claim to. Everywhere you went, there was conflict. It was like fish in a dwindling stream of water, fighting one another over the last gulp of water. And of course, this fish gets that gulp, and the other fish doesn't get the gulp, but they both die. It's pretty miserable. He wanted to look for a happiness that didn't involve all that conflict, and didn't end in death. And he found it inside. It starts with the practice of generosity, moves on through the practice of virtue, and then through the meditation. In each of these ways you find happiness in a way that doesn't need to take anything away from anyone else. And it's actually a gift to the world. That kind of happiness is something that really should be treasured. This is one of the reasons why we bow down to the Buddha, because he has us respect within ourselves the desire for true happiness, a desire for harmless happiness. Pointing out not only that it's real, but also showing us how to find that happiness inside. This is why meditation is such a good thing to be doing every day, every day. It becomes that well that flows with water all the time, even in drought. Refreshing for you and refreshing for the people around you.